Why? Why are all big tech companies at the same time forcing employees back into the office? Despite of petitions and protests from employees. It's not just a product be thing, I think it's morally wrong. But why take giants where you don't need to be on the front line of an ambulance or on an assembly line in a factory when all you need to work is your laptop? But they want to not only your brains, but your body too. Is it just all the managers refusing change? saying you can't be crazy at home? Or is there something more behind it? Let's figure out together. In the 1960s, less than 1% worked remotely. It has reached 7% in half a century despite technology and globalization. Everybody is just convinced that the office is the only place to work. Then a massive experiment took place. It helped test a hypothesis. Can people do their jobs remotely? And it proved that it was possible, and people like it. As soon as the pandemic ended, offices started to force people to return. However, this update is now impossible to roll back 100%. Too much effort went into adapting to the remote version. People got used to work remotely. Some went back to the office, but far less than before. Remote work is now part of the culture. We even use terms like work from home and return to office. Countries offer visas for digital nomads. But I suggest a new term, back to home. Why did people even come up with the idea of working from an office in the first place? Let's take a quick trip back in time. Back then, most businesses were family farms or craft workshops. It was simple. One family, one business. Maybe just a few employees and they didn't need an office. Then came industrialization. Mass production became possible. That requires big, complex factories and a lot of people to work on assembly lines and to manage the processes and paperwork. Accountants, HR, marketing guys, lawyers, and others you would find by the water cooler in the Hello? office. Computers didn't exist back then. Everything was on paper. No Zoom, no Slack, no even phones. So, to discuss stuff like food design flyers for a new steel or where the sheep with a Ford pain got stuck, had to be done in person. That's why everyone worked in offices. Then came phones, but they were only in offices and you had to make calls only from there. Next came complex, expensive computers. And again, to use them, you could only in the office. But today, all your work fits in a laptop and some even do everything on their phones. All the work can fit in a woman's handbag. Need to talk? You don't even need a phone. You can do it over the internet that is available all over the world. Brainstorming on a whiteboard? No problem. Use Miro. Paper documents? Electronic workflow is widely available. The pandemic experiment showed that people can work remotely and do it efficiently. So. All the obvious reasons are gone. Today, top managers cling to the idea of needing face-to-face -face interactions because it stimulates innovation and creativity. I'm not sure about innovation and creativity, but one thing offices guarantee is disturbance and a lack of personal space. There is a study that says, if there is an asshole in the office, the irritation of people within a 25-foot radius or Bluetooth distance increased by 150%, and remote work helps avoid that. When offices only appeared, they were all open space. Super simple. Not even a little fancy like today. Nobody really cared about an employee's personal space. All that mattered was having a desk. Then came cubicles. Each employee had their own cubicle, providing some personal space for concentration. But then Silicon Valley happened. Many tech giants started in the garages and brought the culture of open office spaces with them. Some associate this culture with innovation and creativity. And it's probably not just because startups don't have money for fancy offices at the beginning and need to save so they sit together and make the history. It's time to reconsider office space. It should be a place to work together when necessary, not a place to pretend to work every day. In essence, we should keep all the lounge and collaboration areas and get rid of 90% of the desks. And yet, why do almost all companies, especially tech ones, insist on bringing employees back to the office? 
Arguments about productivity are easy to counter, so managers use the arguments about innovation and creativity. But seriously, where did you get that from? Show me your research. I couldn't find a single one that confirmed the need for office work. For example, there is a significant Gallup study that confirmed that on-site work no longer works at all. Hybrid and remote work are just as effective. Have you tried asking the employees themselves? Just read. Just listen to what people are saying. They said that their lives have turned around 180 degrees with remote work. They are happier and more productive. They are strongly against returning to the office. No one sees the point except for the occasional team meeting. Or look at the petitions from Amazon employees. It seems they are one not in favor of working from office. I particularly like the Zoom argument. We need to be on the same page as our customers, means who back to offices. We make a product for them and need to understand their pain. Oh really? That sounds so logical. Here is an example. Go to office if they use this principle. Zoom seems like the symbol of their mode work. No company taking off like they did. You know, the one about airlines and taking off and Slack. They too pride back to the office. The main tools for remote workers and it doesn't make any sense. Are these really the true reasons about innovation and productivity? I don't believe it, but I have a few alternative versions of why companies claim not only your brains, but your body as well. First version, cheap layoffs. In the last two years, tech companies have laid off almost half a million employees. It's like the whole Miami. And it's not the end, the process is still ongoing. No more cheap money on the market, it's optimization time. The biggest cost is people. It's expensive to fire an employee. To fire an expensive employee is even more expensive. So. What if they could make them want to quiet on their own? Eh? Hmm. How about bringing them back from their comfy bath to a cold, air-conditioned office? For many, that's become a defining factor. It is much cheaper for the company. No severance, no legal costs, no insurance payments. And the company reputation remains almost clean. What? They left on their own. We provided great conditions, but they just didn't like it. Version 2. Taxes. Specifically, tax incentives. Paying taxes is expensive, especially for companies, especially in USA. That's why many companies take advantage of tax incentives from local authorities. Some tax incentives require employees to be in the office or at least in the state. This stimulates the local economy and fills the state treasury. In the past, this was never even a topic of conversation because people naturally went to the office. But today, authorities are setting conditions for the companies. A minimum of 60% of employees must be in the office if companies wanted to keep their tax incentives. But what's the logic? I answer you, money. First, it's about employees' taxes. If an employee moves to live in another state, that state collects their taxes. Second, it's believed that employees who come to the office spend money on the local economy, lunches, snacks, tours, and so on. For example, some folks calculated and claimed that Manhattan losses around $12 billion annually due to remove work. It sounds nonsense, otherwise real estate there wouldn't be more expensive than before the pandemic. Well. As for me, all of these sections look like a big mess and legacy. Why? Well, let's break it down. Why do authorities believe that employees in the office are good? Employees have to spend money on commutation and lunches at nearby cafes and support local economy, they said. Well, okay, but those cafes would move from the office environment to the dormitories. And there will be a high demand. It's not wiping out, it's moving around. Next, reduce traffic jams. Isn't that a good thing? Car flows will simply redistribute to different areas of the city or state depending on where people live. Next, empty offices. Is that a bad thing? It's time to admit that the world is changing and such offices are no longer needed. Turn them into co-working spaces or a cool environment for individual work. 
she would be surprised how many people would come there to work instead of being home. Next, people are moving to the other states? But what have you done to make people wanna to stay in your state? Why do you wanna to keep them by force instead of offering conditions that will make people wanna stay? As for example, Miami and Austin attract low state taxis and actively develop an infrastructure. Globally, Dubai cannot cope with those who wanted to buy real estate and move there. And what about you? So even though many big companies are pulling their employees back to the office, not all companies are doing this. Like at NVIDIA, employees can choose whether to work from home or in the fancy Voyager office. Dropbox paid $79 million to end their office lease in San Francisco early. They said that trying to force people back to the office is doomed to fail. GitLab? All about remote work, but they like keeping the team spirit alive. They give employees a get-together grant, like up to 50 bucks for hanging out with co-workers for meals, transportation, or fun stuff. They also have a travel grant up to $1,000 for going to an event with four or more team members. Erin Jankowski, the first guy at GitLab, even used this grant to go to a colleague wedding. Airbnb made the best ad for their service. They let their employees work from anywhere in their home country, with no pay cut for living in cheaper places. They can even work abroad for up to three months a year. And yeah, right, people totally don't want to work remotely. Everyone's just dying to get back to the office. But really, is fully remote work impossible? It is possible. There are quite a few big companies with no physical offices. They have employees are all over the world and most have never met in person. But here is the curious thing. Literally all jobs open, even in the companies that claim to be fully remote, are tied to a specific country. So companies still care about where you physically are. But why? What if I wanted to change countries every month? What if I don't know where I'll be in the next six months? Or if I leave an RV and am always on the road? The world is set up so that people usually live and work in the same place. Laws are written with this in mind. That is why it is often illegal to hire a remote worker from Thailand for a German company, for instance. The company would need to be legally established in Thailand, and the person would need a work permit there. So you can't just work on your laptop in a country where you are just as a tourist for a week. Maybe this is not a big deal for most people, but for me, as a digital nomad, it's super important. And I'm going to build a company where employees can work wherever they want and move around as much as they like. By the way, write in the comments if you wanted to join my dream team someday. But why? Why should an employer care how many days you spend in which country? That's none of their business. They pay you for your service, not for your body. I almost lost my mind trying to figure out why is it so hard for companies to do cross-border remote work. You know, the answer is simple tax and legal risks. You might even break the law of the country you are in. Like, if it is a holiday where you are and you are working from home you're in your pajamas, you are technically breaking their laws. Seriously? And my favorite, tourists' visa usually do not allow work. You know, observant Jews rest on the Sabbath. They can't do any work, even laundry or pressing an elevator button. So if you are a tourist, you are on a kind of Sabbath. Don't answer emails, don't make Zoom calls, don't write code, you are a tourist. Let's think why this is. It's to ensure tourists don't take jobs from locals. Not about you doing your tasks on your computer and investing in the economy by going to cafes, renting apartments and buying groceries. All this blows my mind. Why is it so silly? The simple answer is legacy. People in the past didn't think remote work was possible. Current flows don't reflect reality. Wait a minute. There are so many smart people in the world. Hasn't anyone come up with us something yet? Today, many companies build and remote teams, high employees globally without setting up local offices. Wait, wait, wait. Isn't that illegal? Yes, but there are loopholes. 
Services now offer remote employment as a service. It's called employer of record. So you are, as an employee, legally employed by another company, like Remote.com. But work for, say, GitLab. Remote.com takes care of all your social payments and taxes by promo code Victoria. No, 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 this is not an ad. Uh, let me tell you that the service sucks, so you believe it. Although they might not be true. But this only works if you have the right to work in the country. Citizenship, residence permit, business visa, etc. But what if I wanted to work remotely and travel? For any employer, this is a huge headache. And if you're a highly available employee, they might accommodate you, but they won't do this for everyone. Today, in many countries, this is a gray area. It is unclear where to pay your taxes and social contributions. It violates the laws of other countries, and no one company wants this hustle. That's why many developers and other employees turn to freelancing. It gives complete freedom of movement, but unlike salaried employees, you only get paid for your work. No social benefits, no insurance, pension contributions, taxes, sick leaves, etc. But it's not all doom and gloom. In response to changing conditions, countries are also starting to adapt. As of now, over 50 countries offer digital nomad visas. What's that? A digital nomad is someone who travels while working remotely. A digital nomad visa is a long-term visa that allows work remotely in a specific country. It is typically issued for up to three years. The requirements vary from country to country, but usually you need to prove to the country that you earn at least 3000 a month or you have a contract with a company where you earn an income. You get the right to live in the country, either not paying taxes or at reduced rate, and work remotely without taking jobs from locals. Share what you think about remote work. Is it important for you to have the freedom to move around or do you happily rush to the office every day? See you in comments. Bye.